Welcome to The Fix List, a guide to improving your paintings by looking at other work in search of common visual problems. And today's problem is variety. And to explain the sort of variety that I'm talking about, you have to understand two ideas. The first is repetition, and the second is rhythm. These are both compositional terms. So with repetition, we have a number of objects that are clearly the same or similar. Our brains, they like that. We like to see the same thing over and over. The thing is, we also get a little bit bored if each thing is a little too similar. And that's where repetition gets a little bit more rhythmic. So here you have objects that are similar, but some of them are bigger, or the way they're arranged kind of breaks up the pattern. And it's that balance between just enough pattern for our brain to be happy, but not so much pattern that it feels too formulaic. That is variety. So let's look at a few examples from the control paint community and we'll see how we can improve the variety. This here is a classic example because clouds, you can do whatever you want with. More than any other environmental or background feature, you can use a cloud to solve your problem. They're great. In this case, the clouds are actually causing more problems than they're solving. What we have here are two halves. There's the left cloud and the right cloud. They're about the exact same size they're sort of straight up and down vertical, and they really flatten the space. Because the character has, you know, a somewhat dynamic pose, there's a lot of opportunity here for her to feel energetic. But I think the background is sort of killing it and making it too rigid. So what I did with my paint over was to leave her intact, leave the foreground intact, and just add variety in the clouds. And here is the result I came up with. So immediately you can tell I got rid of that idea of symmetry. There's not left cloud, right cloud. We have a much better sense of scale and linear perspective. We can see the sort of bottom sides of the clouds getting smaller and smaller as they recede into the distance. We've got a big one here and some smaller ones. Because they are all clouds, they match each other. And that's where the repetition comes in. But because they're not all the same size, that's where the rhythm comes in. And I would say the final result has much more variety than the original, which was a bit more stiff. So if you see boring symmetry in your image, consider a way that you can break it up with variety. And as a side note, if you have clouds, do something fun with them. You might look at this image and think, oh, that's a cool image and is totally different from the last image. Actually, they have the exact same problem. In the last case, it was left cloud, right cloud. Here we have left mountains, right mountains. The trees and the mountains, they each follow this predictable arc. Yes, they do overlap each other, which is good, and it gives us a sense of scale. But the fact that their shapes mirror each other, those curves are kind of the same on both sides and they're the same as each other vertically, it flattens the image. It's repetition, but it's not rhythm. It's not variety. So in my paint over, the way I solved it was to just change the scale of things. Here we have more diagonals because there's more scale variety. So we've got a big mountain and then a smaller mountain and then a slightly taller one in the background. And with the trees, we've got one really big tree and then some smaller trees. And it has a bit of that repetition. So our brains are happy because we see the same shape repeated over and over. We understand it, but they're not exactly the same. And were we to diagram it, it wouldn't have that identical equal quality to the curves. And as such, it just adds a little bit more life and it gives us more to look at and more to think about. Our brains like to solve problems. So one more time, here's before and here's after. And I'd argue that this extra variety really adds some more life, even though it's only in the background. Now that you've seen a few of those examples, take a look at the background and tell me, do you see any variety? Not so much. Here we have a bunch of trees that are all sort of the same vertical, the same width, spaced pretty evenly. It feels almost like if you went in and planted a Christmas tree forest, like on a farm. But what I think would make this image a little bit more interesting is if the background were a little more organic, had a little more variety. Let's take a look at my paint over. I have not done much on this one. I made one tree a lot bigger, and I made another tree over here a little bit bigger. And then I just shifted their spacing a little bit. And I think sometimes a little bit is all you need to do. Really, the image has a lot going for it. And just mixing up the background a tiny bit 
I think changes it completely. Here we have the widest tree is set directly behind the main character. And I did that on purpose. If anything is going to have emphasis, it's going to be this big visual arrow that points at the focal point. All the other trees are somewhat subordinate to this tree. They are the sort of background trees. We have hero tree, hero characters, and the background. Now one more time, here is the four, very equally spaced and equal width trees. And then after, just a little bit different, but I think it helps. And let's go ahead and finish off with one of my paintings. In this case, I'm trying to depict an ancient ruin with some sort of dark ritual. What I'd argue is that it's a little bit too uniform and a little bit too pristine to accurately say ruin. Because I've got plenty of repetition. I have repetition of these pillars here indicating the sense of scale and space. But I think it's just a little too stiff. So in my paint over, I just roughed it up a bit. You can see the pillars now have been weathered and have crumbled. And generally speaking, there's more of a sense of disrepair and ruin. And I think it just helps tell the story a little bit more appropriately. There's before, here's after. So you can't turn every painting into a ruin. But I think in the case of this particular image, it definitely helps add variety. And I want to thank the brave audience members that sent in their art to help with this project. It's not easy to get your work critiqued, so thanks for the help. See you in the next video.